Many of you creative out there probably have a setup very similar to what I have right behind me, which is a laptop link up to external displays. This can be a single display or multiple display as I am showing here, and this laptop can be a PC or a Mac laptop, it really doesn't matter. One of the most common questions that I get about this type of setup is, can I match my laptop display to what I'm seeing on the external display? So let's find out together if this can be done and what are some of the considerations in doing so or not doing it. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I have made a guide on how to calibrate multiple displays. I'll put a link to it up here and also in the description below. I highly encourage you to check that out. The short answer to this question is yes, it can be done. However, there's only a few software that will allow you to match one display to the other and there are a lot more consequences that comes with it and I like to share those with you. But before I do that, let's quickly talk about the setup. I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro link up to BenQ PD3220U. This is their 32 inch 4K software calibrated display that's designed for pro designer workflow. And I also have SW270C. This is their 2K hardware calibrated display that is designed for pro photography and pro video workflow. The thing is this, all of the displays that you see here on this table can work for any type of creative workflow and they work well. And you can calibrate all of these displays. Granted, the SWU calibration, because of the hardware calibration capability, is gonna be different than the way how you would go in and calibrate the PD display or the built-in laptop display. But the first thing that I want to point us towards, the reason why matching colors between display is extremely difficult, is the form factor in general. I love my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I think it has a really great laptop display, one of the best out there. But look at how thin that display is. When these manufacturers are trying to make this small form factor and they're trying to fit an entire display, the LCD panel and the backlight into this super thin panel to make it lightweight, to make it energy efficient, there are trade-offs that they have to make. So in those trade-offs, you get the super thin display. On an Apple device, you get a really great display still, but they're still not gonna be as good as these external ones because if you take a look at the volume on the external display, the enclosure itself has more volume for the manufacturer to go in and put better LCD, put stronger backlight, put even more even backlight in there. So these are all the considerations that you should consider when matching these displays together. The thing is this, if you're trying to match an external display to what you're seeing on your laptop, I highly recommend that you don't do that at all because you're really trying to tone down what this display can do to what this can. However, if you're trying to match this to what you're seeing there, it's again going to be difficult because this display, because of the compromises during the manufacture in order to save energy, in order to make the form factor thin, it can really only do so much. Another thing too is take any display lineup. For example, take BenQ SW270C here. If I have another BenQ SW model up here, the colors are going to be slightly different. That is the same thing with the PD line. I have this PD display. If I bring another PD model on here, the colors are going to be slightly different. And this is not just isolated to BenQ. It's pretty much through all the display manufacturers out there. That's because the panels inside these displays are made by different manufacturers. So what happens when you go in and calibrate the display? Well, what you're really doing is that you're calibrating individual display. You're not calibrating this display relative to this one or this one relative to this one. You're not really doing that at all. You're just calibrating that individual display to the reference color. And generally that's the color space based on the CIE standard. So when you're doing that, the program is going to try to pick the optimal color output and build an ICC profile so that the color is showing properly on this display. When you try to match one display to the other, and yes, there are some software that can do it, primarily the only one that I've seen so far that can really do this is Data Color Spider X Elite. And I think that all of their previous Elite version will allow you to match multiple display too. But the thing is this though, if you have played with that feature before, what it really does is that it puts a picture up and it's asking you to visually compare one display to the other one and make adjustments so that the color match. And at that point in time, you're relying on your vision, which can be highly temperamental. So doing so doesn't really do it scientifically, but it's doing it visually. So depending on the time of day, the environment that you have, if there's light streaming or not, 
that result can drastically change. The other thing too is that when you start to match one display to the other, what you're really starting to do is two things. You're either manipulating the ICC profile even further, and ICC profiles for any software calibrated display already contains a lot of color remapping. Some of the tones are already compressed, some of them already expand. By doing that, you're really stretching that tone further, which can cause digital posterization, banding effects, and all those bad things that you see on the screen. And that's just something to consider, or crushed shadows, for instance. So we're already pushing a lot of these display to a limit. The other thing too is when you generate an ICC profile or when these softwares are generating ICC profiles, what it's doing is a color correction and tonal remapping very similar to what you would do in Photoshop when you use a tonal curve to do color correction. You start to adjust the red, the other two colors, the green and blue, start to get affected well because all these color homogenizes. So when you're individually calibrating the display, it is picking the optimal adjustment to make sure that all these remapping of the colors are as small as possible. And when you try to match the display, you're just really expanding those values out. So the best thing that you can do when you're running in a multiple display environment is to figure out which display is the best in the setting that you have. Take a three display setup like I have here, a super mixed environment. The best one in this setup is going to be the SW270C because of the hardware calibration capability. This is going to produce the most accurate colors. Now if we take this hardware calibrated display out of the equation, we are left with a laptop display and an external software calibrated display. The question that you then have to ask yourself is, is this external display one of the more top of the line creative models from that specific brand? Or is it more of the run in the mill office display? Because the office display may be good, however, they're only gonna be able to show so much color. And if you are linking it to, for instance, an Apple MacBook Pro like I have here, obviously this is gonna be able to show more color than an office display. However, when we're trying to compare these two together, well, obviously the external PD 3220U is going to be a better display in this setup. So what you're gonna do essentially when it comes to this is just calibrate all the display individually and really determine in your setup which is going to be the best display that you would use for reference. So then some of you may ask, well, what happened if I'm on the road, if I don't have these awesome displays, these awesome external displays to link up to, what do I do? Well, when you're on the road, these laptops, if you have gone in and calibrate them, they're really fantastic. They'll get you 90, 95% away there. And if you really need your work out that fast, you can certainly do that. I mean, carrying these display on the road with you and taking it to a shoot, you can always do that as well. It's a lot of work, but you can do that. Another thing that you can do is send quick proof while you're on the road with your laptop. And when you get back into your studio, link up your laptop to these displays so that you can do the final proofing on here just to be certain that what you're sending, that what you're providing your client is the absolute best color possible than the way how you've seen it. So that is my answer to this question. Yes, there are software that can do it. However, if you look at the other software brand that's out there, i1 Studio, i1 Profiler, it doesn't even have that function. Because of the reason that I've listened in this video, when you start to manipulate the tone so much, you really start to push to the boundaries of what those signal output can do and the ICC profile can do. So anyway, I hope that this answered your question about trying to match one display to the other and why it's gonna be more of a difficult task than you may have actually thought. You're not doing everything wrong. You're doing everything correctly by calibrating the display individually. However, it's just the hardware itself that makes it extremely difficult to do. So I hope that you find the answer and the reasoning helpful. Leave any questions in the comment section below. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you're new. Hit on the bell to be notified when I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, art is right. or any hardware calibrated display out of the equation. So we're just gonna swipe to the right there.